This is the CBS Evening News with Walter Cronkite. Good evening. The death of a man who sang and played the guitar overshadows the news from Poland around in Washington tonight. Former Beatle John Lennon, who was 40, was shot and killed last night outside his luxury apartment in New York. The alleged killer is an unemployed security guard and printer who had lived in Hawaii. News of Lennon's death touched off a wave of shock and mourning around the world. Steve Young reports. The shooting happened at the Dakota apartment building minutes after John Lennon and his wife Yoko Ono left a recording session. When they got out of their limousine, a waiting gunman said Mr. Lennon crouched in military stance and squeezed off at least four shots from a 38 caliber pistol. Within two minutes of the time I got there, they brought out Lennon. He was, he was limp. Um, he had blood coming outside of his mouth. Uh, he had his glasses on, and there were maybe five or six uh, uh, police officers holding him, uh, carrying him, putting him in the back seat of a car. And very quickly, Yoko was with him. Lennon was rushed to the nearest hospital just a few blocks away, but was dead on arrival. His body was taken to the morgue. We have arrested Mark David Chapman of 55 South Kukui, K-U-K-U-I Street, Hawaii, for the homicide of John Lennon. Chapman checked into this YMCA last Saturday, moved into a midtown hotel the next day, was seen outside the Dakota over the weekend and yesterday. According to police, he managed to get Lennon to autograph a record album. During arraignment, Chapman was charged today with second-degree murder. He showed no reaction or emotion. The assistant district attorney said Chapman committed a deliberate, premeditated execution of John Lennon in a cool, calm, calculated manner. Chapman's court-appointed attorney called the shooting an apparently motiveless crime and told the court Chapman had tried twice in the past to commit suicide. Next court appearance is set for January 6th. Chapman will be kept under suicide watch while undergoing psychiatric evaluation at Bellevue Hospital. Steve Young, CBS News, New York. Miss Ono announced today there will be no funeral service. She said, we will set a time for a silent vigil to pray for his soul. John loved and prayed for the human race. Please pray the same for him. In recent years, Lennon had retired from the music scene, becoming what he called a house husband, caring for his son, cooking and baking bread while his wife managed their business affairs. He emerged from seclusion only recently, making an album with his wife. And then last night, he crossed paths with another guitar player. We have two reports on the alleged killer, beginning with Bob Seavey in Honolulu. Four years ago, Chapman came to Hawaii looking for the good life. His income came from a job in the print shop at Castle Memorial Hospital. He quit a year ago, but some there still remember him. He did his job well, faithfully, sometimes even uh, beyond what we asked him to do. He'd come up with even more creative suggestions than maybe what we had given to him. He just was a, just a good guy. Printing was dull work, but he took pictures too and drew posters. He imitated Salvador Dali. This was Chapman's Dali favorite. He married and moved here, and until recently worked as a security guard. Six weeks ago, at this gun shop, Chapman bought a 38 caliber short barrel revolver. On the gun permit, he indicated he was then unemployed. Chapman had no known local current police record, thus the gun sale was legal. Inside the Chapman's apartment building, his wife Gloria declined to talk to reporters. Others who knew him expressed disbelief. When I heard the news, I would not believe it because it just seemed like a couple days ago I'd seen him out in front of the building. So I, went, I came down here to make sure that his name was Mark Chapman. But on October 23rd, the day he quit his security guard job at this building, he signed out on the log with the name John Lennon. Then he crossed out the entry. Another guard remembers seeing Chapman in uniform. His name tag was pasted over with another name, John Lennon. A week and a half ago, Chapman left Hawaii for New York. He was alone. Bob Seavey for CBS News, Honolulu. David Chapman was born at Harris Hospital in Fort Worth on May 10, 1955. His father was an Air Force staff sergeant, but little is known about the early years spent at this Washington Street home in Fort Worth. Friends say that shortly after entering Columbia High School in Decatur, Georgia, he became somewhat of a loner. He is remembered for his Army fatigue jackets and long hair in the ninth grade. He wore the army jackets and uh, 
maybe got a little bit on the rough side, if not rough behavior-wise, rough looking anyway. But the thing that I think uh, I remember about Mark uh, is that it seemed like the 11th grade, Mark became involved in the Jesus movement. In his last two years in school, he became known as a Jesus freak and always wore a cross around his neck. His only extracurricular activity at school was the chorus, although he did play guitar in a rock band for a brief period. Friends remember his large record collection that included many Beatles records. He is said to have been a fan of John Lennon since childhood. After graduation, he apparently had to sell part of that record collection in order to pay for his move to Hawaii. His father, who worked for an Atlanta bank, remained in his home today, saying only that he would have no comment. Bruce Hall, CBS News, Atlanta. In Tokyo, Yoko Ono's younger brother said he wanted his sister to return to Japan, where she doesn't have to worry, he said, about gunshots anymore. The gun murder rate in the United States is more than 200 times greater than in Japan, where it's almost impossible for a private citizen to get a handgun. Last year, Lennon and his wife contributed $1,000 to buy bulletproof vests for New York policemen. President Carter said he was saddened by John Lennon. And, uh, and distressed by the senseless manner of it, unquote. President-elect Reagan called the murder a great tragedy, but reaffirmed his opposition to gun control legislation. Headlines around the world on both sides of the Iron Curtain reflected the international grief. Everywhere it seemed that people sought the meaning of the Beatles' lives in their lives. And we have reports from Charles Osgood and Jeff Greenfield. When word of what had happened got out, many people felt compelled to go to the Lennon's building, to stand outside and lend their presence to the night, and in their own rough way, to sing. Today, there were still crowds out there. Ringo Starr, who had been on vacation in the Bahamas, flew to New York and visited briefly with Yoko. He made no public statement. It wasn't a day for dealing with the public. Near Oxford, England, George Harrison stayed inside his mansion. A spokesman came out to say, he's just stunned like everyone else. He can't believe it's happened. Paul McCartney, Lennon's songwriting partner, issued a statement in London. John was a great man, he said. He will be missed by the whole world. And so it seemed. Around the world, radio stations played Lennon's songs. Some played nothing but. People sent flowers, came with flowers, came with messages expressing their own feelings. Others wanted to go buy Beatles records. One New York store sold over 500 this morning. Because I was in the 60s, so I remember him very, very well. Very, very shocked by it. He felt that if he had a message at all for... For this decade, it was about family. It was about love and uh, uh, caring, and it was very tender. It seems like all the people that are really dedicated to peace uh, always get cut down by nuts with guns like Martin Luther King and John Kennedy and John Lennon. Everybody has got to find what John Lennon meant to them. America and the world mourned today, and with reason. It has been said that one thing about John Lennon's songs is that the words were moving because they seemed so right for their time. That was true today. Too true. Charles Osgood, CBS News, New York.